Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 2-mana two 2-1 two Fairy Rogue with Flying, saying whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, we may copy that spell and the copy targets Ivy. So the idea behind this deck is that we're going to play Ivy alongside some other cheap creature, then target our other creature, and then double dip with Ivy's ability. Now what are we going to target our creatures with? We have mutate creatures, which also get doubled with Ivy's ability, and then we also have a whole bunch of auras, as we'll see a bit later, that we can also double with Ivy's ability to generate a very large advantage. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting out with our creatures. We have a bit of mana acceleration, and we've got Elvish Mystic, Elanor Elves, Paradise Druid, which also has Hexproof as long as it's untapped, so it makes it a safe target for various enchantments and other mutate creatures. And then a Sanctum Weaver can also make a ton of mana, since it scales with the number of enchantments we control. And then Merrileaf Pixie, another nice flyer that can also tap for mana. Then we've got a few cheap evasive creatures that make for excellent mutate targets and can also wear some of these draw enchantments nicely as they can attack unopposed. We've got a Miscloaked Herald, Slither Blade, and then Ginger Brute has haste but we have to activate and then can still be blocked by haste creatures potentially. Then we've got a few mutate payoff cards, cards that incentivize us for mutating onto them. Mysterious Egg will pick up a plus one counter each time. Symbiote gives us a one mana discount and lets us loot. And then Essence Symbiote can also put extra counters on it and gain some life. Then we get to the actual mutate creatures, which as we mentioned, we can also double up with Ivy. So we want to target the other creature first and then the copy of the mutate creature we can also put on Ivy itself. And then we've got Sea Dasher Octopus for card draw. There's the Recluse for extra counters and reach. The Trumpeting Gnar can make 3-3 beast tokens. We've got Gem Racer to blow up artifacts and enchantments. Great Horn can help us ramp. Parcel Beast can draw extra cards. The Heron will also draw and give flying. And then we've got the Shore Shark to bounce opposing creatures. There's the Sterix which can put a ton of permanence in play. Demolisher can blow up opposing and non-creature permanence. And Archipelagor can keep opposing creatures tapped down. So the more we mutate, the more value we will generate. And then the final category of creatures are just additional synergies with Ivy and the various cards in our deck. Storm Chaser Drake, for instance, will draw a card whenever it becomes the target of a spell we control. Then the Gnarlback Rhino at 4 mana does the same on a 4-4 Trampler for 4. And then a Kodama will give our modified creatures trample. And Auras also count as modifications. And when a modified creature hits the opponent, we get to search our library for a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped. We've got Reclamation Sage, just a good creature, can blow up opposing artifacts or enchantments. Citizen Champion can draw with Constellation, and Constellation specifically says when an enchantment enters a battlefield, so it doesn't care about us casting the enchantment, so if we double up on an enchantment with Ivy, we get to draw two cards with Champion and put two plus one counters on it. It is a human, so we won't be able to mutate onto it, but it's the only human in our deck. Then Orvar can also copy our creatures if we target them with our various abilities. And Toski, a 1-1 indestructible that can help us draw extra cards. Great with our cheap evasive creatures like Ivy and the various unblockables. And also just a good mutate target as it will be a base indestructible creature. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we've got a little bit more ramp with Arcane Signets and Cultivate. And then we move on to the card draw enchantments where we have Combat Research, Curiosity, Curious Obsession and Sixth Sense, which all basically do the same. They draw a card if our creature hits the opponent. Then a charge through is a cantrip that also gives trample. We've got a few two mana enchantments with Cartouche of Knowledge and a Rune of Flight, drawing a card and giving flying. And then a Rune of Might and Satessant Training, giving additional power and toughness and trample as well as drawing a card. And then Season of Growth, another nice card draw engine, as it will reward us for targeting our creatures, and also lets us scry one when a creature enters the battlefield under our control. And the next category are ways to protect our creatures, because going all in on one creature with mutate or a bunch of enchantments does carry the risk of running into opposing removal, which would ruin our entire game plan, so we need to make sure we have enough ways to protect our creatures, and thanks to Ivy we can potentially protect multiple creatures at once. An offer you can't refuse can counter non-creature spells, giving the opponent some treasures in return, and then we've got a ton of different tricks all giving hexproof and sometimes some other abilities. Dive down, there's shore up, which also untaps, 
There, as you see, Guard Approach can also be used to tap an opposing creature down, Blossoming Defense giving plus two plus two, Ranger Skyle just a plus one plus one, Snake Skin Veil giving a plus one counter, Time Your Safekeeping also makes Indestructible, Wild Shape gives us a ton of different options, and then there's Cradle of Safety and Starlit Mantle as Enchantment Auras, that will also give plus one plus one, and we can play these at instant speed, and then Curator Sword will permanently give our creature Hexproof, and then there's also Slip Out the Back to phase out our creature, helpful against Sweeper effects, and Wash Away can counter an opposing commander for just a single blue, or can be a 3-mana hard counter with Cleave. Then the next section are additional effects that just synergize nicely in our deck. Scale Up can turn our creature into a 6-4 until end of turn, so it can deal a ton of extra damage. Double Major is fun if we can maybe copy Ivy, and then the copy is not going to be legendary, so we can potentially do some shenanigans that way as well. There's Ancestral Mask as just a powerful aura, giving plus 2 plus 2 for each author enchantment on the battlefield, which can also quickly add up. Then the Vesuvan Duplimancy can also copy our creatures if we target them, and Time Warp to take an extra turn, always powerful, especially for drawing extra cards at the same time with our various 1-mana auras. And then our mana base, pretty simple, just lots of dual lands and a few utility lands with Soaring City and Boseju, and Colony Garden also worth pointing out, making an 0-1 plant token when it enters the battlefield, can also be a helpful mutate target or just give us an extra creature to synergize with Ivy. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Provocateur, so Asper Artifacts, and... Uh, our hand could use an extra land or two. Do have a Curator's Ward, but we're also missing a cheap creature to play alongside Ivy. So I think this is a mulligan. Okay, this is a little bit better. Still waiting for a payoff card to kind of enchant or target our creatures. But we can play turn one elves, turn two, maybe go for temple. Since we can't play Ivy and keep up, dive down. Although now we probably want to wait to double major Ivy. So let's go with Elves. And then next turn can play Temple, especially if we draw another land, which we don't need. Although now Signet means I might want to keep up a counterspell for their commander. So I'll just hit for one. Deafening Silence means we can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. Does not include copies, so we're still fine with Ivy. Alright, get that countered. And then still won't be able to play Ivy, since we don't have double blue. So we'll go with Temple. And then probably don't need more islands, do we? Could cast a Trumpeting Gnar, but probably want to wait to mutate it. So we'll just hit for one. Now I guess... Yeah, Silence does not stop us from casting Double Major into Ivy, so that should still work. Actually, maybe I should have kept Islands if we want to Double Major Ivy and keep up Dive Down. But at least we'll have a copy of Ivy, so that might be good enough. Snakeskin Veil also helps. So play Ivy. And then double major. And then still have Snakeskin Veil available. Although wouldn't be able to cast it this turn because of silence, but we can in the opponent's turn. Tutor can find any enchantments, including potentially a Meat Hook Massacre, although at least dive down. We can uh, use to increase our toughness. Same with Snake's Team Veil. Ooh, Ethereal Absolution. That's uh, a bigger problem. So let's mutate while we can. And the Recluse is cheaper, so it also keeps up our author protection spells. As opposed to Trumpeting Gnar, which is 5 mana. So yeah, let's uh, mutate this onto our elf. And we'll copy. So getting a ton of value here. And now the Absolution doesn't look as powerful. Still keep up Snakeskin Veil. Just hit for 8. 
Could have also tapped the elf and then had the choice between the blue protection and snakeskin veil. That was probably better, since we can use this to push additional damage. Opponent replaced their commander. And Satessin training looks great. Uh, probably better than trumpeting Narf for now. Make sure we're targeting the right creature. Draw three cards. And a Cure's Obsession, why not? Although never mind, Deafening Silence says we cannot do it. So in that case... Do I still want to attack? It would be a trade for their commander, so that's probably fine. Although we're getting so much value out of Ivy, maybe it's worth it to just wait a turn, since we can easily trample over their 1-1s anyway. Yeah, we'll wait. And then next turn maybe mutate Trumpeting Gnar and play Cure's Obsession. They can kill my plant with the Absolution, that's acceptable. Could also tap down their commander with UC Guard Approach. That seems fine, actually. And then no need to copy here. But I appreciate the sentiment. Alright, so Trumpeting Gnar mutates. Get even more counters from the Recluse. And this might just be game over. I guess the authority will gain them a bit of life here. And then we still haven't cast our non-creature spell. Pwn's at 22. Yeah, Cure's Obsession should do it and would provide the most value, although Snakeskin Veil would be the most damage. But we gotta go with value. Thank with all. Opponent chumps. And we still trample over for lethal. Awesome. Also about to draw three cards. So that's a power of uh, Ivy, especially with double major. Can be a ton of fun. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing five color Joda. And uh, yeah, this hand has potential. Terminal Elves, always a welcome sight. And then we can play Ivy with Time Your Safekeeping for protection. And then Rhino can maybe draw extra cards with Ancestral Mask. So no attacks with Elves. It's going to make it pretty obvious that we're holding some protection here, but that's fine. And then we could tap out for Rhino, or we could wait one more turn, and for now maybe double up on Rune of Might, and uh, attack with the Lanor Elves as well. Or I can go for Ancestral Mask first. I think we want to draw. Toski's nice too. Okay, so attack for five, start applying a bit of pressure, and then next turn, if we'd like, we could play the Rhino or Toski and then keep the uh, safekeeping available as well. Opponent with a mana geode. The more aggressive line would just be to play Ancestral Mask, which of course is great in multiples, and which could also be worth it since we would have four enchantments in play total. So this is plus six, plus six. So yeah, that will present a two-turn clock. That might just be the better play overall. And then we'll still keep up safekeeping as well. If safekeeping were a different pump spell, we might have had lethal. But this will have to do. Opponent is at three. And this will also help against a potential sweeper by making indestructible and wrath of god. Wow. Things line up perfectly here. Make both creatures indestructible, untap and attack for the win. 
On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing the Scholar of Antiquity, so red-green artifacts. Our hand, yeah, has all the tools it needs, pretty much. Turn one Slither Blade. Turn two. Could already play Ivy, or we can wait to keep up Dive Down. And then a Mutated Great Horn will ramp us into Time Warp pretty easily. Blossoming Defense, so we have a lot of protection, so we should probably use it here. And wait on Ivy. Vivian's Arcbow for card advantage. So next turn our opponent gets to play their commander and potentially still use the Arcbow for mana. And against red-green, Hexproof should be sufficient to save our creatures. Additional toughness also helps in case of a damage-based sweeper. Ooh, Ancestral Mask could be good too, but let's go with the Great Horn first. Mutate onto Slither Blade, copy with Ivy. And this is going to be pretty sweet. Get an island. There we go. Attack for six. Opponent can block. One is flying, one is unblockable. So Ancestral Mask is only going to give plus two plus two initially, counting the copy basically. So that gets us up to ten damage. Blossoming Defense is another four. So we're getting close to lethal, especially once we factor in Time Warp to take an extra turn, which should do it. Silverback Elder, wow. That can blow up our artifacts and enchantments when they cast a creature. Luckily they're tapped out. So I think we still have this. Move to combats. Attack. Take an extra turn. And then Mask plus Blossoming Defense should do it. Make sure we're targeting the right creature here. Awesome. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing green mana, missing a cheap creature. So I don't think we can keep facing Tiamat, five color dragons. So while this can counter their commander, it's gonna be pretty late in the game when they can actually cast it. Okay, this is better. No protection is a potential issue. Do we wait for double mage on IV or do we play it turn two is another question. Opponents getting things started with nurture for ramp. Okay, now I can play a Drake, and then we'll wait on Ivy. And then next turn we could already Rune of Might to Drake just to draw two, while we wait for double major. Immolator, I'll have to read here. I guess just a 2-4. That's fine. So let's Rune... And find an elf, that's excellent. If we can also find a protection spell next turn, we've got it all covered. As we can double major ivy and keep up protection. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks, that's a good one too. It's gonna deal damage to us whenever they play a creature. So that can start mowing down our team. And there's a protection, awesome. So now we can double major Ivy and keep up safekeeping. And potentially survive this terror. So no attacks. I guess the Herald should have attacked for one. 
and the boundless sky. Okay. So we can target Storm Chaser Drake to draw and make the rest of our team indestructible too. Getting some life. And a gem racer could trample our IVs. Although no artifacts or enchantments to take out with it. So maybe going Symbiote's Mutate Parcel Beast is better. Yeah, I guess we'll start there. See what we draw off Storm Chaser Drake. And the increased toughness will make it harder for the dragon to kill our creatures. And then we can activate some of these to draw. And then maybe should have kept a blue mana as well, but that's okay. Does anything want to attack into Terror of the Peaks and the Boundless Sky? Don't think so, we'll just pass after getting our one damage in this time. So still missing blue for Tiamat. Two cards in hand. And Immolator attacks. So when it dies... They can increase the next creature's power. I don't think I really care. We're at 35, I can take it. Bone's gonna pump. And hit us for four. And let's activate. Finding a Sterix. Oh boy. Looking forward to mutating Sterix here. And a wash away for protection. And a dive down to boot. Okay, this is what dreams are made out of. Mutates onto our Drake. You draw. Might have wanted to tap my Mystic there to keep a blue mana. But this is going to be a ton of value. And we'll probably put some islands in play with Sterix. There we go. So now wash away and dive down or up. And one more. And we can put our combat research on our Drake. That one doesn't get doubled because it's not actually cast. Okay, next up. I guess we could move to combats. And send in all the Sterixes. Opponent can trade for Boundless Sky on the Drake. That's acceptable. I forgot to attack with my Miscloaked Herald again. That's okay, we'll attack with it next turn to cross the finish line. So if we remember to attack with it those two times, we would have had lethal. But we just want to extend the game, really, since we're having so much fun. Could mutate again next turn. Maybe onto the Heralds, which would then give us more value with Sterix. But it's going to be pretty sad if we counter Tiamat, so maybe we let them have it. Season of Growth, I can play. More card advantage. Tiamat would trigger Terror of the Peaks, but we have a dive down for protection. So I feel like we should let our opponent have Tiamat instead of countering it. What do you think? Right, there's Tiamat. Hopefully they'll stick around if we humor them. So 7 damage coming in. It's not going to kill anything meaningful. And our opponent goes out in style, targeting themselves with Terror of the Peaks. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the five color shrines. And yeah, we'll keep, since we have a gem racer, to potentially blow up some enchantments. Just need to hit our land drops early on and we'll be okay. Normally I prefer playing Ivy when we can also keep a protection. 
But in this case, I might be forced to play our turn two. And then maybe play champion before going with the Curious Obsession. Yeah, let's play IV. The Shrine's deck typically doesn't run a ton of cheap removal. Curse of Silence instead, alright, so glad we played our commander. So now they don't know what to name necessarily. Gem Racer would be a good one. Just names IV again in case they can kill it later. Okay, now we can hit for two, or we can play Curious Obsession and then still keep up Offer You Can't Refuse. Don't think I want to tap out for Symbiote, even though we want to get another creature going. So we might have to give up on the Champion plus Curious Obsession Dream just to try and hit our land drop some more. Alright, that's good. And yeah, we'll pass with uh, our two instants available. Still need double green for Gem Racer, but maybe next turn we can play Symbiote and keep up protection. Hondon's fine. Don't need to counter that. Okay, so... Step one attack. And a Curiosity. Alright, so now I'm maybe still into the idea of Satessin Champion. And then next turn we can play Curiosity, which will help us find double green for Gem Razor. Arcane Signet will let happen. And Search for Ascanta is fine too. Reclamation Sage is excellent, but let's Curiosity, target Champion, copy with Ivy. And that's going to be a ton of value. There's our green. Okay, well, this is going to be pretty brutal. Gem Razor Mutate. Although, never mind, I guess Champion is one of our few non-humans. So we'll wait to get the double Gem Razor value and just attack. And then maybe play a Symbiote. And then next turn we can mutate. And our opponent has given up as we've got more than 10 cards in hand here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing the five color legends, Joda. And this hand has some nice early creatures, but we're missing stuff to target our creatures with. A mutate creature would go a long way, but without it, this feels a bit weak. Okay, this is better. Got a nice mix of uh, early creature, protection, payoff. And the short shark also good at bouncing creatures, so should be a decent hand. And now I can play Garden and potentially turn to Ivy, unless we want to play it slow. And I guess go for a turn to Symbiote. Yeah, maybe that's safer. Since we need Symbiote in play anyways. Four mana to mutate Shore Shark. So wouldn't be able to do it next turn if we were to go IV and then turn a three. Mutate. Alright, Dryad. Play an extra land, so next turn we can already see Joda. We're just gonna play IV, keep up safekeeping. And then next turn, maybe bounce Dryad and Joda with a mutated shark. It will leave us tapped out, so we won't have access to safekeeping then. It's going to be an Ornithopter first. Opponent may be waiting to play Joda and a spell on the same turn, or they want to Void Rend. Uncounterable, but luckily Indestructible still works. Could have also targeted Symbiote, but doesn't matter in this case. And a Storm Chaser Drake. So I don't have to mutate Shore Shark, but we also don't have any other protection available. I could play a Drake to next turn target Drake and maybe draw an extra card in the process. Opponent is down to one card in hand. So, yeah, maybe playing Drake is fine. And then hit for two and pass. And then hope they just tap out for Joda and that's it.
and Riot hits us for two. Okay. So now, Sure Shark on Drake, Bounce, Joda. Looks pretty good. Oops, Castle comes into play attacked still. Probably wanted to keep up a land in case we draw protection spell with Drake. But our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we have a one lander, so probably won't be able to keep. Facing five color Kenrith. So Mulligan. This is probably not gonna cut it. Missing green, missing a cheap creature. This is better. And then we're still missing a protection spell. Storm Chaser would be good alongside all of these cards. So it's hard to say which one to bottom. Rune of Might works better with Ancestral Mask. So maybe get rid of Octopus, even though that can draw a few cards. Um, sure. And then probably go for a turn to Drake. I hope to pick up a one mana hexproof trick by next turn. Although it would have to be a blue one if we want to cast it. It's going to be a cold steel heart for ramp. So yeah, next turn it could already play a sweeper. So we may not have time to play it safe here. Just hit for two, play Ivy, cross our fingers, and then next turn go off with our Rune of Might. Alright, Faber Elder can make more mana, but at least we get to untap. And see what we draw. Get to draw three total. And time your safekeeping is good. Could also mutate a Parcel Beast. I think I would rather keep up safekeeping and then next turn I can play Symbiote, Mutate Parcel Beast and still safekeep if needed. Although we could also find room for Ancestral Mask. So they could play Kenrith. Faber is still only making two mana. And Incubation Druids, okay. So they could put counters on it with Kenrith, so it makes three mana next turn. Could be quite explosive. Cure's Obsession, alright, so now I'm into the idea of kind of ignoring the Mutate package and going for Obsession plus Ancestral Mask instead, which is going to deal a ton of damage and draw a ton of cards. Do we have Lethal? Let's find out. Yeah, I think we do. Okay. There we have it. On a Mulligan to 6 here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Psy Master Thopterist, Mono Blue Artifacts, and our hand has potential. Season of Growth will help us cry towards blue mana to set up our Time Warp. And then, of course, to cast Ivy as well. So for now, play Season of Growth. And I guess we can attack for one. Hope to hit our land drop naturally, so we don't fall behind. Forest still works. So now play Symbiote, which will help us scry towards more blue mana. Opponent may be keeping up a counter spell as they didn't tap out for their commander, considering whether or not they want to counter Symbiote. We could also scale up just to draw with Season of Growth, as opposed to waiting until we play Ivy. Especially if they're gonna counter her anyways. Right, Symbiote resolves, and a Thornwood falls. It's not ideal, but it is blue mana. So I'll keep it hit for one. Probably 
opponent playing a draw-go style of game. So we can take our time at least. Opponent passes, Colony Garden will also scry with Season. Yeah, I'll get Ivy countered here and then next turn we might be able to replay her already. Counter spell, sure. Scry towards another island, there we go. And I'll be patient on targeting my creatures since we've already played land for the turn. So all things considered, probably a good matchup to uh, have this slower start. Go and finally going for Mindstone. Keeps up three mana. So they're definitely going to counter Ivy again if we try for it. Could Time Warp get that countered instead. Could Mutate Parcel Beast. Got a couple options. Um... If I get Ivy countered, it will cost 6 mana to replay. Problem is I cannot time warp and do anything else super meaningful. So... Maybe we should parcel beasts. See if they counter it. If they don't, we should just start activating it for card advantage. And if they counter parcel beasts, we can resolve Ivy. Found a land, Parcel Beast on top. And uh, yeah, we'll just hit for 3 Activate Parcel Beast, maybe do that first. Cartouche's not bad. Play that on Symbiotes. Draw 2 essentially. Alright, they're gonna negate that. But yeah, Season still triggers, and a Reclamation Sage is going to be pretty great too. And now Parcel Beast, a great tool against counterspells, as we can just slowly gain card advantage. So our opponent is forced to make a big move, goes for Psy, still two mana up. Alright, so Rex Sage can destroy their Mind Stone, leaving them with just a single blue. And then we might be able to resolve Time Warp here. Land on top. Does Parcel Beast put the land into play tapped or untapped? Untapped. So if I keep land, I can activate Parcel Beast and still Time Warp. And we want to wait for the floating mana to go away. So move to combat, not gonna attack. And then time warp, take an extra turn. That works. And then now we can go for Ivy. They could still have a wash away to counter, but they don't. Combat research is fine. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we could definitely combo off now with Ancestral Mask and scale up to take over the game. Awesome. Well, that worked out, so we got to see our blue-green Ivy Spell Thief deck in action, and it can be incredibly powerful if you've got a right start of early creature to go alongside it, maybe a protection spell, and then a payoff to start doubling the advantage. So an incredibly fun deck to play. There's a few ways to approach this IV deck. You could potentially play other effects that copy your creature. Problem is, of course, IVs legendary, so if you copy without removing the legendary part, you'll have to get rid of one of your IVs. But if you mutate onto IV first, then the mutation no longer has the legendary type, and then you can potentially copy IV with something like Quasi Duplicate and potentially get even more value. It does feel a little bit win more, 
but if you want to go for those big ridiculous plays, that might be the way to go. Also, quick side note, if you play the IV mirror match, things get pretty crazy because both IVs will be able to steal the opponent's spells as well, so you get to copy the opponent's stuff, so things get pretty ridiculous from there, as uh, both players will build up a huge board, unable to necessarily make any attacks, because you both control pretty much the same board, especially once mutate creatures get involved, so just be aware of the IV mirror match. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.